do you have one of these or one of these? If you do, you may also remember in 2011, an American blogger living in China discovered a fake Apple store when strolling in the city of Kunming. The interior design, the merchandise on display, and even the employees' blue t-shirts all look like they were real. But soon, the blogger determined that it was a total Apple Store ripoff. Her blog post received over a million views in less than 72 hours. Not only was the news piece reported by major media outlets like CNN and BBC, it also triggered Chinese authorities' investigation. What they found out, however, was that all the Apple products sold in the fake store were actually genuine. So why was a store selling real products so naturally characterized as a fake? That's how I became interested in the cultural logic that gave rise to China's fake Apple store phenomenon. On the surface, the Kunming store was a fake because it was not an authorized Apple reseller. But as I probe into the meanings of the store for the company as a whole, I've come to understand it as an embodiment of some of the central contradictions of the intellectual property rights regime now operating on the global scale. Chinese fakeries are perhaps as important as the Chinese reality of manufacturing labor in helping us to understand the unevenness of contemporary globalization. Hope you get a chance to check out the article coming out in Theory, Culture, and Society. Thanks for watching.